I wanted to go over this presentation by Don Groom from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. He is, along with his colleagues, uh, one of the main people that uh, established some of the theory behind using CCDs uh, for determining what is a muon and what is not a muon uh, when using the kind of technologies that uh, people have developed smartphone applications for and this desktop application that I showed you, Cosmic Ray Finder. In this slide you can see output from the uh, National Optical Astronomy Observer uh, Observatory, uh, their detector, and there's a whole bunch of tracks uh, from a long dark exposure on that, and this is in uh, Tuxen, Tuxen. Uh, and these over here, these straight tracks, are muons. These are what they call worms, uh, these squiggly ones, and these are what they call spots. The trick is to get rid of anything that they can get rid of uh, automatically uh, and then to try and narrow it down to uh, what are actually muons. So these squiggly tracks are not muons and I'll go into that a little bit later. Here's a clo close up on uh, a squiggly track, uh, they're the sort of things you want to get rid of. And here's a couple of close-ups on some straight tracks. And what it's saying here is the straight tracks are no great mystery. Uh, because they're straight. 95% of sea level cosmic rays are muons with mean energy of 4 giga electron volts. Uh, for a horizontal detector, the rate is 0.8 to 1 per centimeter per minute. They're using thick detectors that allows, as the muon travels through, it to create a straight track, um, rather than if you have a very thin uh, uh, sensor, CCD, or so on, it, you'll just end up with a spot, and you can't really determine whether that's uh, a muon or not. So he's saying that they're left with these worms, and... Uh, Apparently these are very familiar to people who used emulsions half a century ago and these are multi, multiply scattering electrons. So he's saying muons are straight, the tracks are straight rather, but by contrast worms are fat. So essentially they, they can discriminate. So the applications find some bright spots in your phone uh, CCD that's been covered uh, and then they their, their potentials, and then they look for if they're squiggly by looking at their uh, um, how elliptical they are um, by uh, using software to anal analyze their shape, and that would determine whether they're straight. So here's some analysis of uh, some sampling and unclassified. They don't know what that is, and. These are worms, can't class those as muons, and these are spots, so you can't really class those as muons. So there's just this little range here uh, of samples and, and tracks that you can classify as actual muons. It's quite interesting, however, uh, it's quite funny, because in Santa Cruz, one of the main pieces of research was done, uh, so... It'd be interesting to find out where that is, how near it is to where we're conducting our experiments. But uh, they, at the CCD uh, Lit Lab um, in Santa Cruz, they established about 30% of the tracks on their uh, long exposure CCD, thick CCD, were in fact muons. And you can see here, these are the muons uh, that are in this box. These are the worms, the red ones, and the green ones are the spots. They conducted tests on other sites, uh, some were underground and or near reactors, and uh, you see uh, the ones that were underground and near reactors. They basically uh, didn't uh, see any muons, well there were some here, 
but in Santa Cruz they saw plenty of muons um, uh, close to the expected value. So we're hoping maybe to uh, get in contact with uh, the group and you know maybe they can lend us our the proper proper muon detectors that they have somewhere in this town. So here it's saying the worms are worms and spots are almost certainly recoil electro electrons from Compton scattering of environmental gamma rays. And the biggest uh, problem is apparently uh, potassium forty decay to argon forty, and uh, obviously there's potassium everywhere. So you can shield this with about a centimeter of lead, they say. So that's one thing we might consider. Here you can see bear, you've got your muons here, and you've got lots of uh, worms and uh, spots and, 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 you know, don't knows. You see your muons don't change, but they've got bare eighth of an inch of lead all the way through to three eighths of lead. So it looks like that is a pretty good figure here, uh, three eighths of lead. On this slide it's saying basically simple lead shielding one centimeter can reduce the Compton to below that of cosmic rays. So the cosmic rays become uh, the most significant signal.